Okay. So there's a couple of things that I like to do before doing yoga. And well, okay. I've kind of learned from various other people and then put together my own style, if you will. But one of the things that I use is, and Cam's laying on it right now because it is our typical lay mat, <laughs> but so a mat, because that becomes our on-off signal for wanting to participate, although he's just laying down for the sake of it. <laughs> and then you don't have to use a yoga mat. Mine is actually a yoga mat that's been cut into sections, and that's what I use as my mats for my well, I don't have a yoga mat handy right now. But not for now. Ah! We suggest using some kind of mat. as well. Ah! Azul wants to play. He doesn't want Cam getting the attention. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. But, okay. So the reason that we use a mat is that it's a good way for your dog to indicate that they want to participate with you. So whether you use a blanket, a mat, a raised bed, it doesn't really matter. But the idea is when they're on it, they're ready for more activities. And if they get off and walk away... <laughs> They're saying either what you're asking is too hard or they're just done with the activity or whatever. So this is different than yoga in the sense that the dog is doing yoga, not the dog. Hey, Jen. Hey. So I was going to do the yoga part, but then I found out that Crystal's boyfriend's going to be here any minute. And the only place I would have to do it is in the living room. So that would be weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For you doing yoga? Are you doing yoga? <laughs> well, Betsy's here, but she's she's just observing the world right now. Okay. Hey. Well, and I mean, I have a spasm. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to do too. yoga either because he wants to play. See, when I do zooms after seven seven o'clock, he's asleep and nobody sees his antics. <laughs> But now that I want to do something nice and calming and relaxing before seven o'clock, he's going to be a spaz. Cam, Cam, blanket, go. Cam, up, 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 go. Blanket, Cam. Dude, go. Up, up, up. Lay down. Stay as well. All right, let's see if we can get Azul to participate for some yoga. Oh, now that Cam's in bed. <laughs> okay. Are you so, sure there's dogs, not children? <laughs> they're acting like children tonight, man. So I always start with a blanket or mat because that, as I was saying before Azul so rudely interrupted me, is that that is like their signal that they either want to participate or they don't. So one of the important things in yoga is compared to like some more traditional training is you want your dog to have the freedom to choose to participate or choose to walk away. So another thing that you always want to have handy is water because you actually end up using quite a few treats. And I have a couple of different treats down here. But so you also want to have water and dogs, if they're feeling stressed or you're asking them to do something that they don't want to do, are likely to step away to get a drink of water if they just need that moment of chill before they actually come back and do it. So always having water handy is very helpful. So I'm gonna position camp water over out of our way where he can get it if he wants it. Is that water for the human or for the dog? Both, because I have my water. And typically when we do Zooms, the dogs end up drinking at least half of my water. So, water for both people and dogs. Good thing to have. So, the other thing, in a way. the other thing that I like to have ready before yoga, besides your mat, your water, and your treats, is kind of just like an outline of some different activities that I do. And so, I mean, I have that on my computer, but trying to manage both the computer and um, the Zoom at the same time are a little bit challenging. So if you see me going back and forth, 
All right, so I have food, water. Um, oh, the other thing is that when you're doing yoga, always do it in a place that is safe for you to either be off leash or with a drop long line so that your dog, again, have, feels that freedom to be able to move away from you. So you guys are all familiar with me and know that my dogs do a lot with hand targets. And that's really where I start with the yoga is, you know, I want them to do various hand targets in order to be able to um, move from position to position and do the different things. So we're gonna start out really, really easy with a simple loading the mat activity, which I mean, you guys all know how to do it, but it's kind of important to warm up. And Cam has already done this today, but we're gonna do it anyways. So Cam, come here. Okay. Matt, what's Matt? Matt, And I'm not too worried about him being perfect on the mat. I just want him to be on it so that he knows if he wants treats, he's going to get them by coming back to the mat and as we'll drink all his water. So <laughs> I told you they end up going through half of my water. Here. They'll probably end up going through all of it this time since the treats I'm using are more like pepperoni. <laughs> okay, is it a problem if they down on them? They come back. So it doesn't matter how many times you actually load the mat and get them excited about it. I'm only going to do it maybe one more time when Ken finally comes back <laughs> because he's already kind of warmed up and that's easy for him. I somehow lost my other screen. There it is. We're not going to go say hi to Bucky right now, Bats. Yeah. All right, Ken. Come around. There you go. Can you come back? Very nice. try yoga. Right. So the first thing that we're actually going to look at is a basic, he's going to get overexcited by the treats. So the first thing we're going to look at is a basic neck stretch. So we'll go a little bit to the side and reward. Okay. And make sure you do both sides. And so I'm just using my basic nose targets for now. there. And you want to do a couple both sides, starting really small, but you also want to be careful that you're not just luring them with the food like I just did right there. I was kind of showing you just luring. Because the problem is if you're just luring them with food is that you could accidentally stretch them beyond where they're comfortable at, depending on how flexible your dog is weight and how used the two they are doing these activities. They may be able to turn their neck further one way. So the good thing about yoga is that you can um, judge, like Cam typically heals on my left, so his head is often facing me when he's trying to look at me, and right now he's turning more this way because I'm actually on his other side. So that shows me that like he can actually turn both directions pretty evenly, so I know that he's, he doesn't have any neck injuries at the moment. Should you be directly in front of your dog while you're doing this? You can do either. It depends on what is most comfortable. Right. So it does help, like, since your goal is to have them centered, and, you know, when they're resting spot, their neck is kind of straight, yeah. being right in front of them helps with this particular exercise. But I'll kind of move around my dog as I'm going through the yoga. Okay. So you get your side-to-sides going. And you don't want to move too fast or turn too hard or ask them to go further than what they're able to do. And then you do a couple of ups and downs. And you'll find that like most dogs will go down further. Nose, nose. He's, he's laying so low already. I have a hard time getting him to go down any further. And they struggle to go up because... Um, Unless you do a lot of hand targets where you're positioning up in the air, they don't, come on, no, right here, no. And see, he didn't really want to pull up, so he chose to sit up because it was easier. Nice. Nose, nose, good boy. And so if you practice that a few times down and up, it's nice and calm. You don't want them to go too far. You don't want them to stretch. 
or if you want to go back and do a couple of side to side, you can do a couple of sides to sides. After that, we kind of move into foot targets. And again, the idea is to not stretch them beyond their limit. And you start with just a simple paw or shape. You right. want to kind of move with each foot if possible. Right. And it doesn't matter if they're hitting the perfect target or not. The goal is to lift your paw up. Okay. You sit. Okay. They can be sitting or standing too, but he's trying to sit. So I'm just going to let him do that. All right, can I have your paw? Nick. Oh, thank you. And then eventually I want him to get his paws up a little bit higher stretch. So then I'm going to try to get him to stand. Can I have this one? Yeah. Nice. Huh. And struggle with this one a little bit because I'm not going to push it too far because he um, has issues with his joints. Can I have this one? Oh, one, huh? Other foot. There you go. And if I had a tool in front of me right now, I'd be doing some paws up higher. You can't really see my hand. But so if I had a zoom, I'd be doing paws up here as well. Something beyond what I was able to do. So not gonna So back to center. The other one that he's more relaxed. If your dog knows back paws, and Cam might struggle with these a little bit, but I'm gonna see if I can't get him to push his butt nice. just a little bit. Oh, up. Every time I sit down, he gets down. Up. Up. So he's not really a huge fan of back paws, but so I'm just gonna like pick it up a little bit. Because it's in his back hips that hurt over here. And I want to make sure I do it a little bit with each foot. A gentle lift is all that they need unless they've really worked with back foot targets. So like in Nick's case, um, he's used to putting his feet back against an object. Mm -hmm. so that as well to kind of get them stretching and starting low and moving a little bit higher. So those are very, very good positions. Well, we can pull out your, we can pull out your thing and do your back foot when we're doing this. Yes. And that. anything that you normally use um, when you're doing different stretches or exercises, find out my next one. So, all right. So I thought this was going to be more us doing yoga, which is why it was like, I don't know if I want to be doing this when Crystal's boyfriend shows up. <laughs> no, this is canine yoga. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then so the next one. It's yeah, but goat yoga is, isn't goat yoga where the people are doing yoga? Come on. Right. Yes. Around goats. All right. Back up. Yes. Goats participate a little bit. So the next one that I would go into is going to be more of a body stretch. And in order to get Cam to do that, I'm going to have to stand up. All right. Now and I'm going to switch screens. So, all right, Cam, come on. Up, up, up. All right, step up. All right, see? All right, turn around. You notice I am in my yoga pants just because it's been Hey, I'm in, I'm in cycling. I'm in bike shorts. All right, I got to turn him around. Oh. Okay. All right. Back up. Nice. It's not going to work that way. We just don't have enough room. What's the long stretch? Back so up. basically, I want him to stand on the mat and then stay. Stay. I want him to stretch just a little bit further out. Stay. So, if, okay, come here, Nick. So it's almost like the next stretch. So what you can slowly work into, and I don't know if Cam will do it, but this is where I need a Zool bow. Yeah. Do you want them to be so? Okay. Yeah, the next one after you did a few like straight out, you would go into a bow, but can't nice. not gonna go into a bow because that's too hard on his hips. Nice, that would be my next position. Does anybody have a dog that easily does go into a bow that wants to demonstrate that? Nice, all right, come here. Nice. Let me kick this up. Let me get all right, come here over here. Turn around. No. All right, bow. Can you bow? He's like, what is going on? I just got to get right. on. 
Come here. Let's show on TV what you can do. Bow. That's a down. Come on, stand up. Come on, stand. Good boy. Bow. Nice. Good boy. Yay. And so if they're used to doing well, sometimes you can get them to develop that stretch just a little bit more by getting them in the bow and then doing a nose target just slightly. And I'm talking like a half bow. inch further out. Know, oh, come on, stand up. That wasn't a good bow. And that can get them even a further stretch beyond the bow. I don't know if you can see how arched his back is and how high his yeah. bow is. He's about yep, at skeletal yeah. limits. Nice, good boy. And I'll circle back to that one and see if I can get Azul to do it. Because mm -hmm. that's actually one of Azul's favorite positions and he does it. Um, he does it pretty much every time he stands up and then he does his <laughs> hips. So I will also use a few more neck stretches. Um, Necks are kind of like one of the things that our dogs don't typically stretch and hold in any way. So, I mean, if they're typically healing on one side quite a bit, they might stretch it in that direction and hold, but it's not something that they normally do on a day-to-day -day basis on their own. So I will also incorporate some chin rests in kind of that, you know, doing the next stretch nice. a little bit more and so I'm going to chin See, he's laying down so he's not taking a step forward if he were standing up he might try to step forward or chin but nice. yeah. so I'm going to try to get him to hold his neck in various positions by doing that chin target okay. oh, sorry. Chin. Chin. and he's a little bit too far there he goes See how nice are you watching yeah. So when you're doing it with the hand targets in the beginning, you're kind of just doing a quick movement there and back. Yeah. But if you've done some other stretches, you can work into the more detail down. Chin. Oh, chin. Nice. I would say this class has um, prerequisites for it. Chin. There you go. Um, and that's just it. My dogs are hand targets, chin rests, things. paw targets. So yeah, I use the stuff that they know to be able to develop it a little bit more. You don't have to do it that way. You can do other things. Oh yeah. Um, like hand targets are really the easiest one, but they don't have to know how to do a bow before you start to do the yoga because it's something you can slowly work into if you can get them just to stretch a little bit in the bow position and slowly build up. We shape that because Nick does it all the time. Yeah, same with Azul. He absolutely loves it. So, um, but he's not gonna let me put the toys away see. later. So, do the toy box. so you can also do the chin rest on to a target chin. That's a poodle yeah. thing. Which is very, very good. I'm like, I'm using my hand as a target, but if you have things of different heights, you can actually help to, you know, to be able to stretch their neck a little bit more. So this is a lot lower, but um, because this is something Cam's used to doing and I can adjust the height with my hand, I can do the chin on this as well, chin. I thought my poodle target was yeah. over there. <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't want to do chin no more. So he's done with the neck. And that's another th key thing when you're doing yoga is with your dogs is to not on what they can do. So the next thing that I like to do is it kind of goes back to the paw targets, but it's more of a standing paw target. So we'll get Cam back up. And I'm going to use a target disc just because that's what he knows. You don't have to do that. The point for this one is I'm going to wait for him to come back to the mat. Wait. And so you want him to like an off fours nice and steady. 
and then you stretch one paw out, and he's gonna stretch them both out because he's content to lay down. I don't know if you guys can see that because I changed my screen. Yeah. Okay. So you have them lay on the carpet, or you just have uh, no. The goal was to have him just put one paw out in front of him, but he chose to lay down. Go get it. Go get it. So we're gonna try it again. He might lay down again because he's had a busy day. Right, Nick. Want him to stand square? And what? then paw, paw. There. Okay, well, we run into this. So the goal problem. is that they're still putting weight on that foot. It's similar, like a back, but there you want your foot slightly more forward. Nice. Perfect, Cam. Good job, Camo. There you go. Cool. I'm not sure if that's easier to do with a bowl or if it's easier to do with his nail file. Yeah, you can do either. Go find it. Just because Cam is used to that, and the goal is to try to get him to work each foot a little bit further. And like most dogs, will automatically bring all four feet into the square position. So if they're not doing Stand that, up. either they've had quite a bit of target training here, Cam, or if that nice. is the case, they have an issue where one paw is not. Working as well as nice, or it may not be a paw issue. Like for Cam, you guys can see him. Do you want a flat leg or sideways? Cam, come here. All right. Do you want a flat target, or what are you looking for for a target? Um, anything that you can get your dog to stretch their foot out in front of them and still put slight weight on it. I want you guys to try to see Cam's back feet if I can get them positioned. All right, right. come here, Nick, for a minute. We get so motion when we're doing that. Come on. You, yeah, and that's just it. So, so the other thing does it stand up. Come on, stand up. And now I can't get him to do it <laughs> when I'm sideways. So, right, right. so when Cam comes and stands, he starts on all four. But as soon as, you know, where he's nice and solid and bright. Right. But as soon as he moves one of his front feet, you can see it kind of right now. His back foot is closest to you guys is off kilter. And that's yeah. because he has skip issues up here and it's affecting his foot. So he puts less weight on that foot. And so that's kind of the importance of having them stretch your foot out into a walk back. 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 He's not going to do it now. Come on. Probably because I have him on my right side instead of left side, and he's used to working on the left. Pa. Pa. There. When they stretch one foot out like that, it tends to let you see those different issues for the rest of their body if the other feet don't stay square. But dogs will like automatically, when they come up to stand by you, will typically stand pretty square. He wants to go into a sit, and that's part of the reason that hip is coming okay. back. You know, I know what she's wanting. A little bit, because that's how he sits. And all the wrong things. Kind of see it there when he's sitting. So I try not to make Cam sit very long or very often, but he's been so reinforced for it over the you know, his lifetime, okay. that that's kind of his default. So, the, on there? Nice. the next thing is more of a, all right, so we did the head target where they were turning their neck side to side, right? Mm -hmm. Stand up and down. Full body turn. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. My preferred way and the easiest way can be back because it's easiest to be able to tell if your dog is doing it or not. And my dogs are heavily reinforced for the under position. Cam, under, there. So if you take kind of a turn to the side, see how his feet had to move a little bit? Stay, I gotta get more treats. <laughs> so you want to get them to pivot so he's not just turning his head like he previously was. 
Hey, Bozo. She's going to have to repeat this. Yeah. Just so you know, I wasn't expecting this Zoom, so my battery may end up dying. And if it does, I'll join you guys for the next one. Okay. Technical issues today. Yes, but meanwhile, here's Betsy living her best life, putting her chin on... Oh, it's such a run of it, it is. <laughs> well, Nick went over to his tile to see what's going on. Oh, oh, that's enough. You have had so much attention today. Oh. Yeah, my phone crashed. Obviously, you guys probably realized that. Yes. So let's see if I can't get his little moving again. He has yeah, eaten quite a bit today, so he's not super treat murder. Got it? Okay. Huh? Jim wants it. You want to come play? You want to come play? His little says nope. Betsy heard your voice asking that, and she looked up at me, and her tail, her tail started wagging. I think she misses you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so Cam's not super comfortable being under the position every, in the under position for long periods of time. So I would, like, for him, I'll let him get out each time I turn him side to side. But Azul would kind of stand there and go back and forth if he were cooperating. So you want to kind of go based on your dog's skill. But then if you can get them to turn all the way around, even if they come out and go all the way around and back under again, that's good muscle movement. Do you want me to see if Nick will do it in the under position to demonstrate, Penny? Go for it. Come here, Nick. Well, the goal of your will. body is turning. And it's just not as quick on a dime like Azul is, you know? And obviously, turn a little bit tighter, a little bit easier. All right, Nick, come on, middle. But yeah. He's so, and I'll do that with Azul, where I'm actually turning with him as well. But Cam doesn't like it when I move when he's in the under position. So I was letting him solely do the turn, which is he's more comfortable with. Nick's but bending a lot because he don't nice, tight turn. You can also do a spin instead of the under position. Yeah. I want them to go too fast. That. Is that the one you do on a paw target? So if you do a spin, you want to make sure you go both directions. Yeah. You can have different words for them, but that's good for the dog. And that's kind of the scratch that you want them to do is that position. Azul and Cam just do it better when they're in the under position. All right, come on, over here. Yeah, so Cam is saying that he's done now, going in that opposite direction. And probably because that, that plays into account his bad hip when he's asked to turn the other direction. So he has more weight on that one. And well, he'll the other one I do with that one, in one direction. With spinning is... This is bad, but it's actually, I have him, um, I'll do it, I'll pivot, and I'll have him, um, Nick, come here, Nick. This is more of a obedience thing, though. Nick, sit. Come here, heel. And then we heel. Oh, he's like, he doesn't want to do it right now. Come here, heel. Get in heel. Nice. Right. Heel. And heel. 
good boy. So he's turning that I, you can do it as many degrees as you want. Yeah, he swings the back end around typically. My dogs don't like to do that. He, well, he, he's been but, but that's another good stretch. He's been trained to move his back end. He does the heel targets up, you know, the foot targets up behind him. He does the mm -hmm. pop-up stands. He does, um, or the kick stands, whatever you call them. Yeah. And um, my dogs to like back up and they can even back up like stairs and put their yeah, back and stuff like that. But they won't do the back up and spin at the same time. He can back up stairs and he can back up and spin a little bit. I think he's, he's had, ready to play again. He's had to do all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. on Zoom chats today. So then, that's so relax. <laughs> he thinks Cam's getting all the attention as soon as oh, I Oh, poor baby. Away from him. But so those are kind of my basic go-tos. You can do more than that if your dog is very athletic and used to doing a lot. Um, the more stretches, like I had said earlier for Azul, I would do get his paws up higher in the air. That might get him moving. And back. Azul, come here. Azul, come here. Do you want to There you go. So yeah, I like to do that one too. You want to do it nice and straight. Oh, Azul went into his bow automatically, but I think he was off screen. Penny, that's also a good one for vet vetting. The vet yeah. get at them easier if they're not on the table when they jump up like that. Right. Yeah, Azul does pause up on a lot of stuff. Come on, he wants to play, but doesn't want to play. So up, yeah. yes, and bow, and you bow, bow. There you go, good boy. Hey, he wants. He's so he's gonna pull me around the room. I don't know if you guys. Can see He's basically on Jen's bed. Mm -hmm. He's trying to pull me around the room. Do you know how much your bed is used by the dogs? But he does a great bow. Drop. Yes, he does. Drop. Does he do pretty? Does he do what? Lily really does. He does not like pretty. I heard. Lily does. Lily does. <laughs> Lily does it on the boat. <laughs> When he's trying to get up. That's he's another good one for core strengthening. Right. <laughs> That's another one that I will incorporate if the dogs will do it. Um, again, for Cam, his hips are not quite there. It took oh. Nick a long time to get the strength oh. to do it. And you're welcome to demonstrate it if you want to. Nick, come here. Oh, no. How about Lily really demonstrate it? hips are kind of just like. We lost Jen. Hitting the point where they're more solid, so. Except we can't see Lily. Yeah, in your, you're in your background, Ashlyn, or your video. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Cam. He recognized I said his name. Yeah, he's just hoping for more treats. Nick is done. Yeah, my boys too. And that's an important part of doing yoga with the dogs is that you want them relaxed and enjoying it. And if they're not... There she is. There's <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Really? Good job, Lily. You know you're getting a little brother or sister? <laughs> oh, 
Well, so I've been needing to record this video for yoga for quite some time, and I thought this would just be a fun way to do it in a group of friends, and that was kind of my inspiration. So now I can tell all my friends that I went to dog yoga. I've been to a dog birthday party and dog yoga and a dog birthday party online. And so you probably have realized now that you pretty much do dog yoga every day already based on different stuff that you do. So it's a matter of kind of putting them all together with that conscious thought of, can I get my dog to do it just a little bit further or stretch just a little bit further than their normal? Okay. Does this mean we're dog moms? I think so. I think a lot of stuff means we're dog moms. Lily is doing a great paw target there and a great chin rest now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Quiet. What other topics do you think would be fun for fun Friday chats besides yoga? Goat yoga. Um, <laughs> <laughs> goat yoga Don't with little dogs. Goat. That would be interesting. Um, right. Jen and I do both do yoga ourselves. And then um, our dogs hold a down stay at our feet while we do it or sometimes help with certain activities. But... <laughs> I used to do yoga. Um, I haven't done yoga in years because it hurts my back and my neck. Yeah, I haven't really done it in months either. Um, and I do it when we get together. To be honest, the topic of hiking, we could just chat about hiking because a lot of people don't know about how, how to take their dogs hiking. Yeah, and we could I have I some videos of hikes and things that we've done. We could and I don't know about you, but you know about your area, but around here, you have to worry about what's growing in the streams. Right. We really have streams that have those kinds of issues, but we do have some plants that we have to be more worried mm -hmm. about. And yeah, that could be a fun one if we discuss some of the things to watch out for. We also have um, some wild. <laughs> predators that we kind of have to keep our eyes out for lions and tigers and bears oh my bears yes not lions and tigers there well, are we have, we have lions and bobcats we have mountain lions we have bears mm -hmm. any other ideas for fun friday um, how not to find dead bodies um <laughs> on a hike oh but that's um, so fun I know that I'm going to be doing some parkour activities. Parkour would be a really good one so people understand what it is and that you don't need any special equipment. Right. The hard thing with that is that we kind of have to record the videos ahead of time because I'm not going to go set up my phone and laptop and whatnot out in nature where I'm going to find those parkour stuff. Well, we could go do record yeah. some parkour and then discuss it. Right. That's what the videos you discuss it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I'm actually going to be teaching some other people locally here about parkour soon. So I'll get some videos doing that as well. I've always done that. I just didn't know it actually had a formal name. Right. You know, and I mean, a lot of people do agility or, you know, agility based stuff. And which is basically what parkour is just in a natural environment. What you do? Yeah. Well, I got Nick hitting the button. I guess our easy button doesn't work. Yeah, it's good no, I got him pawing it. Well, that's yeah. a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Now Azul's real ready to do his yoga. Yeah. <laughs> of course. But um, so we have hiking and we have parkour. parkour. What else can we chat about on Fridays? How about emergency preparedness? Well, that would be a good one. Because, I mean, it's basically the same for your pet or, right. your, um, yes. or your service dog. However, it really you really need to have a plan and you really need to be able to explain to some, some people just don't understand why, um, 
I used to do that for a living for people. So I can definitely talk about that. With yeah, but some people don't understand why it's so important to crate train your dog for an emergency. Hi. We could do different crate games as an activity as well. Hi. That too. Oh. I mean, we all probably have a little bit of different crate games. I shouldn't I stick them in there writing these down. Yeah. Puppies. Nick came crate train. That was really nice. Good stretch, Lily. Good stretch. Cam's like, I want more goodies. Cam's like, go up on blanket. Oh, I can use the batteries I bought that were wrong. <laughs> I needed AAA and I bought AA. So I'll fix this. Sorry, so all wrong tree. I'm so sorry. So we're working on learning buttons. So we have a weird list of stuff we're working on. So now Azul's decided he wants treats and he's ready to work. I wonder if I can get him to do his twist. Come here. Come on. Come on. Yes. Are you getting it? Yeah. Came all the way out though, dude. Under. First. He was all the way around. But I don't have this one. When I don't have the cable messing me up. But yeah, Zul's very comfortable with movement in the under and back. Walking backwards is also great stretch muscles. Walking backwards is important, especially for service dogs. Okay, they were on here the other day. Very nice. You back? I'm back. Nick went away. There you go. Good job, Zoomers. Yeah, see, Nick or Azul waits until I'm done and then he wants to play. Of course. His activities. Oh no, these are triple A's too. 